We uh, welcome everyone to our uh, inaugural annual general meeting for the Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association. It's uh, been uh, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of work, and a lot of people have come together to uh, make this all happen. So welcome. Uh, my name is Aidan Cavisto. I'm the chair of the interim board of uh, directors for the Nonprofit Association. And so I'll be uh, running our meeting this morning. So. Uh, first, before we get to the official business, I just want to um, say that this meeting is being recorded for uh, all those that are have registered for the event, but maybe not been able to attend this morning, and so that will be sent out. So if um, you would like, you can have your camera off, and uh, we'd ask that everybody who's not speaking be uh, muted, uh, just so that we don't get lots of feedback, um, and yeah, and we'll we'll proceed. And of course, we want to always acknowledge um, the land that we come from and the land that we're on. Um, I'm originally from Thunder Bay, which is uh, Robertson Superior Treaty, uh, uh, 1897, I think. Um, and that's the land that I come from. But uh, today I'm on the ancestral territory of the uh, Big Mom. Uh, the territory was covered by the Treaties of Peace and Friendship, which the Mi'kmaq and Velastiquik uh, Malisi peoples first signed with the British Crown in 1725. The treaties did not deal with surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized Mi'kmaq and Velastiquik uh, title and established the rules for what was to be ongoing relationships between nations. We strive for respectful partnerships with all the peoples of this province as we search for collective healing and true reconciliation. We also acknowledge that Nova Scotia uh, is home to over 50 African Nova Scotian communities whose culture, heritage, and histories have been and remain a key part of this province for more than 400 years. Generations, people of African descent have experienced inequities due to systemic racism in Nova Scotia and still do today. We strive to listen, uh, to learn, uh, First voice perspectives of Black Nova Scotians, amplify Black voices, and support Black communities and address inequities and injustices. Uh, so uh, we'll have uh, Nicole Wright as our secretary of the interim board. Um, I recognize the notice of meeting. Thanks, Aiden. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so this notice of the meeting uh, was uh, circulated to approximately 400 people on June 27th, um, specifically to the people who participated in the Build Together process, um, and approximately 135 people are registered for the meeting today. Nicole? Um, so uh, this is uh, the agenda for today. We've, uh, we're uh, going to be doing a, a quick vote to approve the agenda, but I do have a note about voting um, before we go ahead with that. But um, we're going to try and keep it uh, keep it succinct today. But we do have uh, some uh, guest speakers to to work in and um, hear from. So uh, with that. The, uh, I'm going to just make the motion to approve the agenda. Oh, I got a note here. If anybody is um, not muted, uh, could you please mute? Um, okay, so uh, in order to vote, uh, being that this is our inaugural meeting and we've uh, accepted some um, memberships already uh, in accordance to the bylaws we uh, people that are voting members are uh, considered people who are part of informal housing uh, organizations so uh, whether a network or coalition and has been accepted for membership as well as nonprofit housing providers um, that have also been accepted by membership so um, if there's anybody online that is not part of an informal uh, housing group and is not registered as well as um, a nonprofit housing member that is not registered. We ask that you uh, do not vote uh, at this time. 
And um, uh, Pauline, if you could just uh, maybe describe how we want people to vote, whether it's a thumbs up or a, or a message in the chat. Sure, Aiden. Yeah, so as Aiden mentioned, we'll simply be asking for people who are eligible for membership of the Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association to vote. So those who are nonprofit housing providers or, or organizations that are informal housing groups, networks, and coalitions. And um, so Aiden has made a, a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So I think at this time, if we could ask for a, a seconder of that motion, and then we'll we'll vote um, with the folks who are eligible at this time simply by acknowledging um, with a, a show of um, a, th a thumbs up in their in their options their reactions. And Nancy O'Regan is with us today, and Nancy will be monitoring um, the the screen to make sure that we do in fact have um, have approval to move forward with the agenda. I'll say uh, point us to the chat and uh, Sherry Costa Lorenz asked if um, an SLEO is considered to be a voting member. And I'd say if you registered the or, uh, uh, as an organization to be a member, uh, then that would uh, be an indication to vote. Pauline, if you have any more details about that. Sure. So uh, as part of the membership application process, um, you are asked to indicate whether you are a nonprofit housing provider an informal housing group network or coalition, uh, a member of government, which is our third membership category, which could be federal, provincial, or municipal, or if you are potentially an associate. And an associate would be another nonprofit uh, whose primary mandate is not housing, but has a very vested interest in housing. So Sherry, I would suggest that the Nova Scotia League for Equal Opportunities uh, would likely register as an associate member, uh, therefore not being a voting member. And Colleen has asked a question about how many people from each organization can vote. Um, and as you will have seen on the membership application, um, there is one person who's uh, designated as a representative from each member organizations. So that one person will be tasked with casting a vote for that organization. And if you have other questions, please feel free to place those in chat as well. And uh, either Nancy or I will uh, respond to those as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, Nancy, if you could just monitor the chat and uh, pop in and answer questions as they, in the chat if you can, um, just to, make sure that people's uh, questions are being answered. Okay, so um, we'll do our best to answer people's questions in the chat, but um, uh, for those that registered and um, are sure, sure you're accepted, okay, that's good. Um, I just need a seconder to approve the uh, agenda. I'll I'll Colleen. Oh. I see Colleen Cameron. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Anna Kanish Affordable Housing Society. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, any discussion? About the agenda. Hearing none. Um, all in favor? Uh, raise the hand function or thumbs up. And then uh, any to the contrary? For folks that are maybe contrary, maybe just uh, say aye. Okay, hearing none, uh, uh, motion has been accepted for the agenda. Um, Aiden, it's Colleen here. I don't know if yeah. this might might help, but um, when there's so many on Zoom here like that, sometimes it might be easier to just ask for those who are opposed to the motion. Sure. Um, if we expect most people would be in favor, if there's some opposed or abstaining, they can say, and then the rest would be um, in favor, I guess. So. Okay. Oh, thank you for that. It's uh, the Zoom etiquette for Robert's rules, I'm sure, is 
uh, had to be figured out over the last few years. So thank you. Okay, and um, we're satisfied with that. I'd like to uh, move us to our first uh, guest speaker. Um, Stefan uh, is part of the, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> my head is just blinking this morning. It's my Monday. Um, the uh, Canadian uh, Housing Transformation Center, or Community Housing Transformation Center, my apologies. And uh, uh, Stefan's been involved in uh, the housing sector for uh, many years and comes to us with a lot of wealth. And the Transformation Center has been uh, a key uh, key partner in making this all come together uh, for the Nonprofit Housing Association. And so um, without further ado, I'll let uh, Stefan take over. Well, thank you very much, Aiden. Um, does it sound good? Yes. So, okay. Well, um, hello, everyone. I'm, I must say that I am um, both um, moved and uh, 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 very enthusiastic about uh, the fact that today there's 70 of us on the attending the on-call screen, which is a significant uh, attendance for for what one could see as an administrative event. I mean an AGM for, for creating a, a, a structure. And it is uh, with a, a great thrill because uh, the Community Housing Transformation Center is, well, as the name say, there to transform the sector. And one of the first endeavor that we uh, embark on uh, was because we start our operation literally on December 13, 2019. So, and the first real activity of the center was to organize and attend a meeting, um, co-organized with um, Phoenix Youth and a few others uh, in Halifax on the early days of January 2020. And at that point, one of the assessment that was done was that uh, there was no uh, sectoral organization for the not-for-profit sector. So uh, out of that discussion, first initial discussion, came all kind of first and formal and then more formal and organized things. And, and the center is very happy that you know, one of its first project that they support was the project of the community itself to organize themselves in Nova Scotia. And today we're celebrating that. So it's a, it's a, it in itself is an achievement, not, not of the center because the center has been participating, but it's a realization that the people of Nova Scotia uh, did themselves. And, and you no, know, celebrating that today is just tremendous. It's just fantastic. And it, it shows the potential to go forward. Um, I also would like to say that, well, um, even if it's, well, it is part of the discussion today. This is, you know, that, that capacity to go forward and to organize is the demonstration of a resilience. And I would say in the case of Nova Scotia specifically, there's a there's some special resilience that occur in the last, simultaneously with that process. I don't believe there's a connection between those two, but still there was a hurricane, <laughs> then there's the flood, there's the, the, the fire, for, uh, the, the, the forest fires and, and so on. So Nova Scotia, I mean, I would say fairly unlucky uh, <laughs> on that side of thing, but still the, the capacity of the, of the organization in the province and the willingness of the different partners, including of the Nova Scotia government to, to be supportive of the process uh, led to something that is, uh, that was done in large part also uh, thanks to the support uh, and the, the, the very intensive and dedicated work of uh, many people, including Pauline McIntosh from uh, the Cody Institute that was instrumental in bringing everybody around the table and, and carrying the message together. Um, that another thing that that discussion uh, that is uh, very tightly uh, connected with the process that we're completing today is that simultaneously we uh, convinced the government and uh, uh, which wasn't that hard to convince because there was good intention there so it's possible to find ways in those time um, to to generate what was called what is still called the community housing growth fund including this specific dream to support the association. So I can tell you from experience that in other part of the country, when a provincial organization were set up first, there was not an official commitment from uh, government to provide funding. So I think it, it makes sense to, to say a kudo to the Nova Scotia government there. But again, 
if the government was on board is because a sector expressed its willingness and its uh, ambition and, and and had a vision and a dream of saying no we can do things differently and we can answer the need of the Nova Scotian people who are struggling in view of the of the housing situation and community housing is, is a good answer there and that growth fund that start being operated now uh only uh since uh, just a, not, not even a year yet of operation uh, you know there's already 46 grand that were awarded for almost two million dollars so that's a real injection and there's money ahead for another uh, five million dollar more including two million dollar for carve out for black communities uh, in nova scotia so that is th those are significant achievement and um and and we cannot but celebrate the fact that the the, the nova scotia people are there now having a tool such as a, a not for uh, not for profit association is essential but you no know, the use of the tool is even more essential <laughs> and uh, i am uh, trustful because i've seen the different working plan and the different uh, hope that are going to be that have been raised and i'm sure some more will be raised during the meeting today uh, will be uh, will be uh, essential in making sure that the sector is growing at a pace that is not only meeting the, the 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 demographic growth of Nova Scotia, because which is one of the fastest in the country, but we have to be able to grow the sector in a way that we do catch up with what we haven't been able because of the of the constraint of financial constraint of governments and so on that for the last 30 years we haven't been able to to keep up with the growth of the population so we have a big huge challenge ahead of us to say you know how do we grow the sector and at the same time make sure that we also have a challenge that we have to meet is that many of our organization our buildings need repair which is the case also so not only do we have to consolidate and repair what we have but we have to be looking forward and doing that collectively i mean we're a community housing not, not the well i'm working for the community housing transformation center but with the community <laughs> housing sector and the important word there is community so by working together we can leverage both in terms of advocacy but also services and capacity we can do more together than we can do it individually on our own so we now have a tool that has the potential to increase the output and outcomes of every single organization in nova scotia and everyone should you know invest in it because they know the return will be for them as an individual organization but also for us as a sector so i mean i'm not gonna take much more time i think i've been told to well i still have four or five minutes so i'll share with you some of those ideas that i think i i i i, I dare sh share with you is that uh, we are uh, thinking all over the country and in Nova Scotia on ways to say you know, how that collaboration could be happening. So, for example, um, there is things that are happening in other provinces at this point, thinking about you no know, joint investment fund that would be not only committed for one organization, but that would leverage together the capacity to go further. Uh, there's many provincial organizations that have set up uh, things such as insurance program, where you, know, you you deal one global insurance program with one corp with one insurer rather than having each of you dealing with an insurance corporation that is trying to sell you a product that is tailored to their program rather than having a program that is tailored to you. And that is uh, no no one left behind that you make sure that anybody coming from the community housing sector is entitled to receive that and i'm quite sure with the the, the series uh, again of the flood and the forest fire <laughs> and, and and all of those things that occur that the challenge of finding at a reasonable price an insurance company to protect your assets is probably something that is uh, a challenge uh, lived by many of your organization uh, there is the capacity and again the growth fund could be leveraged for that there's a capacity uh, to see what could we set up jointly in terms of uh, developing projects that have things in common. Um, I, I was uh, looking uh, the other day to a, a very interesting event 
where there's a number of not-for-profit, not in Canada, sadly, but still it's existing, it's community housing, where uh, they happen to, to have a fairly large plot of land where several organizations were sharing a piece of the land to do their project. So, but it's not only about buying a piece of land at a cheaper price because you buy a bigger piece of land, but also thinking the infrastructure jointly where they have now a, a joint heating system that is one system that is heating for everyone that is more efficient and it's only one system to entertain. Anyway, so there's all those opportunity that are there in front of us that could make a difference. Um, so basically what I want to say is that all that thing was done, including with uh, the, the support of um, people of the center that are attending today. So as the ED of the center, I really need to, to salute the work of the staff of the center that have been involved in to that. So people like uh, René Hébert, like Alison there, like Shikara, uh, I've been uh, in, instrumental in every phases of the process whenever they, they came in the team. And there's organization that have been there uh, since the beginning, also on, on the side of um, the local organization. Uh, so I, I, I want to present a, a total kudo to, to all of those people and saying both as a as an ED of the center, but as a longtime activist for the right to housing across the country, as an activist that says, you know, we have to do as much as we can as a sector, but also say the government has to do everything they has they, 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 they need to do to support us to do that mission because at the end of the day a healthy and prosperous society cannot happen or is only as prosperous as the, the poorest and the most disenfranchised of our society and if we don't That's work right. and, and if we don't work together to change the the spirit that says you know, oh, wealth is good, and we don't care if it's being concentrated into the hands of few. Well, this is not health. This is hell. And there's a big difference between having a healthy society and wealthy society and having a hellish society. And if you end up with a society where the right to housing is actually denied in practical, even if there's no law that says it's, it's forbidden, the reality is that more and more people are facing a situation where they have to choose between paying their rent or paying their food. Well, this makes no sense. And we have to change the dynamic of the housing sector altogether, the housing industry, to make sure that it cater for everyone, including the people most disenfranchised and the people who are you know, the, 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 the working folks who have low income, but still working a lot. These people also deserve to have right to housing. The people that are um, you know, senior citizens that are living off um, pension plans and stuff like that, that are fixed income, that are facing now challenges that have been living for 10, 20, 30, 40 years in the same apartment that are being renovated. So the way to correct that is to stabilize the housing market and have a much larger imprint of the community housing sector. People who live in our building are protected from speculation. They are protected from um, you know, um, aggressive behavior that only see them as cow that you milk to make money out of them. We see people as something fantastic. They're not cow, they're people. And they're not sheep that need to be shaved. They are people and they deserve to be looked at as people. And as a society, we will all live better if we look each other as people rather than a you know, piggy bank that we break and take money out of. So there's a big challenge for the community housing sector to transform not only itself, but to transform the housing sector altogether. And we cannot do that if we only three, four percent of the housing suck, which is a situation across the country, including in Nova Scotia today. So we got to grow the sector and we got to grow the people we're talking to. Yes, we work and support the most disenfranchised people, but we also need to cater for the people that are working folks that need support also. And this is the way forward for the sector. And I'm totally confident that the community, that the Nova Scotia, Nonprofit Housing Association will be instrumental there and will raise the flag of Nova Scotia across the country through different organizations that are eagerly waiting for years to have contribution for Nova Scotia that was difficult to, to receive and, and, and channelize uh, until there was a creation of such an association. So congratulations really deeply to everyone that have been involved in it. Uh, would it be the the sector people, again, the people at uh, Scientific, the people in the different organization that involved themselves, 
and the individuals at the center and at the government who have been uh, making a, a real contribution to it. And I think it's a it's a it's a joint effort, and frankly, it's a successful story for the center, a successful story for the sector, and I really believe so, a, a success story that is just starting for Nova Scotia people and the sector. So thank you very much for your, for, for bearing with me for a few minutes, and, and mainly for the work you've been doing for the last few years. Well, thank you, Stefan. Um, I think uh, you can tell from your words, your passion for the work that we're doing. And I think having set the tone uh, from the center to support the work that we're, uh, that we're doing and that many others across the province are already doing as housing providers, um, it really, uh, it really uh, gives us a lot of advocacy when it comes to ask, asking the government for support and asking other funders for support. So. I, I think, um, you know, with the leadership uh, that you provide for the center and the set and this, all the staff that work very hard at, at trying to help us grow this, I think it really, it really does um, show that we're in, we're in the process of shifting and changing here in Nova Scotia. So thank you. Thank you very much for, for sharing your words. And um, it gives me lots of uh, hope and excitement for the work that we're, we're moving forward to next. So thank you. Um, next, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Pauline. Uh, she's going to uh, talk about our um, model for the center or for the uh, nonprofit association. So, Pauline, uh, it's all you. Thanks, Aiden. And just before I begin, I'll do that check to see what are you seeing on your screen right now? Are you seeing a full PowerPoint presentation? No, just a small one. Okay, we'll do a little adjustment here. How's that? Yep, that's great. Great, thank you. So thanks everyone and Aidan, thanks so much for asking uh, me to, to share a bit of information background about the Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association. Uh, today, I'm really pleased to be here with you and I'm, I'm delighted to see so many on the call. And those of you who've been part of the process thus far uh, have heard most of this before, but for people who are just joining us today, uh, we thought it would be really important to let you know a little bit more about the Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association as it has been envisioned and, and as it's being built, and to let you know uh, what this organization hopes and intends to do uh, to strengthen the community housing sector in Nova Scotia. So to start, the work of the, of the Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association is really to support the mobilization, empowerment, growth, and sustainability of Nova Scotia's nonprofit housing providers and the informal housing groups, networks, and coalitions that support their work. And as Stefan mentioned, uh, working with the center over the last couple of years, uh, we have been involved in doing province-wide consultations around uh, the strengths that exist in the community housing sector, where we need to build capacity, how we would like to work together, and so on and so forth. And what we heard time and again was that there's a strong need for the Nova Scotia nonprofit housing, excuse me, providers to come together to share what they're learning, to share information, to share their successes, to share their challenges, and work together to build the capacity of all of the organizations who are out there doing this work. And one of the most interesting things that we uncovered in, in our, our consultation work is that there are approximately 70 organizations in the province who are not housing providers, nonprofit housing providers, but they're informal groups, networks, and coalitions that have formed in communities around the province because they're so concerned about the state of housing where they live. And these people have come together as volunteers, as service providers, as elected officials, and so on and so forth to talk about how can we contribute to nonprofit housing solutions. So the folks who've been involved in this process thought it was really important to include not just the nonprofit housing providers, but also this whole multitude of, of community-based organizations who are working to create nonprofit housing solutions. And the work of the Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association will be to provide a bridge, to provide a forum uh, to bring all of these organizations together, to strengthen them, to mobilize them, uh, to provide them with avenues for working together. 
And another key message that came out of all of the work uh, that preceded the formation of the Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association was that anything we do going forward must absolutely be based on values and beliefs that we've heard over the last two to three years from the people doing the work. And it was felt that there really is, this is an important time to create a shift, a shift in the systems that we work in, a shift in our attitudes, a shift in the way that we actually approach the work, who's engaged in the work, how the work is done and so on. So the Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association has some very clear values and beliefs that underpin its work and that we will strive uh, to achieve and to live by as we go forward. And they are that we believe in housing as a human right. The Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association believes in diversity, equity, inclusion, including first voice, accessibility, and decolonization in the community housing sector. It believes in environmentally sustainable nonprofit housing, that we need to create good quality housing, uh, not only for people, but for the planet as well. It believes in equitable access and opportunity for both rural and urban nonprofit housing organizations. The organization absolutely believes in working to end racism and stigma that limits access to appropriate housing. And it believes in providing navigation and support for people who are living in, in housing, in nonprofit housing. In addition, throughout our whole entire processes over the last couple of years, it became abundantly clear that this organization really needs to stand up and make a statement about establishing diversity, equity, inclusion, and decolonization practices. We have to live this value. We have to put hands and feet on this value. We need to be able to see this value in the work that we do, how we're doing it, um, who's included, how people are feeling about it. We need to build relationships with underrepresented and equity deserving groups, and we need to meaningfully engage first voice. And the first thing we need to do is recognize that we're just at the starting point of this work. Uh, there's a whole, a whole, range of things that we need to learn and need to build our capacity and need to become really active listeners and engaging with groups to make sure that we are approaching this work in a way that's that's truly inclusive and becomes a learning journey for all of us. And some of what Stefan has already mentioned this morning is really um, is really embedded in the model that's been created for the Nova Scotia nonprofit housing association. And I think that you'll be able to see, hopefully from, from this depiction, this graphic depiction, that it's not intended to be a top-down organization. It's very much intended to be connected with community, uh, communities across the province. And for that reason, the model proposes the formation of regional housing networks, which are, are noted on the top of this, this model by RHN. And these regional housing networks are intended to uh, to span the province. They're intended to include not only members of the association, but anyone in these regions that can be contributors to nonprofit housing solutions. It was also felt that two of these regional housing networks really need to be dedicated uh, to people of African descent and black people living in Nova Scotia who are striving to create housing solutions, particularly for that community, as well as for Mi'kmaq and Indigenous people living in Nova Scotia. There really needs to be separate and, uh, and fully dedicated regional housing networks a form for those two, those two uh, populations in the province. As is indicated here, the members of the, of the uh, Nonprofit Housing Association will include nonprofit housing providers and housing groups, networks, and coalitions as the voting members. Of course, there's also space for the wonderful associates across the province who've been so supportive of the work thus far. And of course, government. Uh, we need to engage with, with government at the municipal, the provincial, and the federal levels in order to ensure we're all working together. The Nonprofit Housing Association itself will be comprised of, of a board of directors as well as staff, a, a relatively minimal staff complement to start with, but hopefully this too will grow. 
And the work of the association will take place in the five areas indicated uh, in terms of programs and services for the members, uh, in terms of fostering partnerships and building collaborations, uh, in terms of strengthening the capacity, not only of the individual member organizations, but also the capacity of the sector across the province. Uh, it will be important to do work in the area of research, policy development, and advocacy uh, for the nonprofit housing sector. And a major part of the work of this association will be fostering communication. So communication among and between members, but also with external bodies and groups uh, who are important to engage in this work so that we are ensuring uh, that as many resources as possible are dedicated uh, to creating long-term sustainable nonprofit housing solutions uh, for people who, who desperately need housing at this time and to make sure that that housing is secured well into the future. And finally, you'll see at the bottom of this, of this uh, depiction of the model that forming strategic partnerships across the province with a variety of organizations is going to be absolutely key to the success of this association. Um, there are so many folks and organizations out there who are all concerned about housing at this time, whether it's from a service provider perspective, whether it's from an inclusion perspective, whether it's from an education perspective, a policy development and influence perspective, from a funding perspective, and, and many other ways. So harnessing existing programs and services, working with existing networks and, uh, and collabor collaborations across the province, making sure that we're, we're not duplicating, but that we're mobilizing our existing resources and scaling those resources and scaling that work so that we're able to achieve more for greater positive impact faster for sustainable nonprofit housing solutions in our province. And this is really what the Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association uh, is being formed to do. And in each of these areas, there have already been uh, very clear objectives outlined. Uh, Stefan referred to the work plan that's been created for the next two years. And we also uh, have a, a, a strong list of partners that we hope to connect with in the province so that we can go forward doing this work together. And not just in the province, but with other nonprofit housing associations across the country. There's a great deal to learn and to share and many benefits to be, to be realized by working together um, uh, within Nova Scotia, but also with partners across the country. So that in a nutshell is what we hope the Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association will be able to, uh, to focus on and hopefully have great achievements and accomplishments over, uh, over the next couple of years and well into the future. And Aidan, I will leave it there. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing all that, uh, Pauline. I know that you've been instrumental in this whole build together process to get us to this point. So I really feel like you're the uh, the expert, you and Nancy are the experts on this, uh, on how this has come together. So thank you for sharing all of that. Um, the uh, next item in, on our agenda is the executive report, which uh, I'm happy to provide, but uh, Janet Sims is our uh, first co-chair. So Janet, I'll uh, ask you to take over as chair while I um, uh, provide the report. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Janet Sim, first vice of the Nova Scotia Nonprofit uh, Housing Association. I will take over as temporary chair and I'd like to invite Aidan to um, provide the executive report. Thanks, Janet. So um, my involvement uh, as chair has been a, a crash course in uh, learning about the housing sector, but also in learning about all the different organizations that uh, provide housing, uh, nonprofit housing. So um, back in October, there was the uh, founding meeting as part of the conference that was put on by the Transformation Center. And it was there that uh, a host of us had signed up to be a part of the interim board, but as well as part of the collaborative teams. And it was uh, the work of, of uh, the interim board and the collaborative teams that got us to this point and helped shaping uh, the model, but also trying to collect all of the information that uh, was taken from the conference and try to uh, bring it together so that we are living true to those values and bringing those values and beliefs together. 
So the three collaborative teams that we had uh, were the program service, programs and services and capacity building, uh, organizational development uh, and values and beliefs, and uh, partnerships and collaborative uh, or collaborations and communications. So it was uh, this uh, a large group of people that had started out that uh, was able to work on each of these pieces and, and uh, bring together um, uh, the structure that uh, Pauline had had uh, uh, discussed. But it was also the work of our uh, interim board that was able to put together our articles of incorporation and work uh, very closely with uh, a lawyer from Cox and Palmer, uh, Andrew Alexander uh, Remington. And he was fantastic and uh, was very giving of his time uh, to help us uh, incorporate our values into the bylaws in a way that um, uh, made sense and, and uh, held, held true to what the, had been discussed at the uh, founding meeting. So it took some time, but uh, by April 28th, we were able to get our official incorporation certification through the joint stocks. Um, and that was a very exciting time, but it was also crunch time because that meant we had three months to plan our AGM. Uh, and in that time, um, we also had our first official interim board meeting once we were incorporated and a volunteer meeting. So those were held on May 26th and June 25th. Uh, and then we were able to work uh, closely with the um, uh, Transformation Center to create our funding agreement, which included a, a, a two-year work plan, which is very ambitious. And we're um, very excited to kind of see all those pieces kind of come together. Um, and that, so that was just completed back in the beginning of June. And so from there, we were able to uh, come together with our notes from the collaborative teams and our uh, human resources committee to uh, look for our executive director and recruit for our executive director. And we have um, a strong field of candidates already, and we're looking to um, get moving on the review starting at the end of this week uh, and into next. And so we'll be reviewing uh, candidates uh, shortly. And also as part of uh, something that is, is going to be a big key piece to this work is our communications and branding. And so last week, our communications committee was able to um, uh, affirm uh, RNG Strategic uh, as our uh, communications firm that's going to be helping us build the brand. And again, building in all of the uh, values and beliefs and information that was brought from the founding meeting, we're really trying to keep uh, inclusive of all of those ideas, but also of the different groups. And so uh, we're very excited to work with RNG Strategic. They're going to give us an opportunity to send out um, proofs. And as the work progresses with them, we'll be able to send it out to our networks to, again, get feedback and, and keep everybody involved in the process as best we can. Um, and then finally, we're also uh, recruiting our members. And so that's, uh, I'm sure, uh, we, a few of you have seen the uh, email come by and we're uh, recruiting, but we're also raffling off uh, um, tickets to go see Michelle Obama. There's a, a slide further down and, and in here that has the, the links to that so we can reference that after. But uh, we want to make sure that we have a strong membership and that the membership feels like they have a voice uh, because it's it's going to be a, as a, a provincial organization association, we want to make sure that everybody um, has access to resources that they need and that we're able to, to again, push the sector, push the growth in the sector. So uh, up until now, that's kind of the very uh, short condensed version of all the work that's happened. And I, I'm just going to take a minute to say thank you to everyone who's been a part of the collaborative teams and the interim board, uh, as well as other supporters and of the work that we've been doing, it's um, it's been a lot of a lot of conversations, a lot of meetings. But um, I think that we're on a a great track to success and success in starting the organization by growing the sector. So um, thank you to everyone who's been a part of all of those meetings and all of the process. Um, to this point. Um, yeah, and so that's the end of my executive report, uh, Janet. I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Aiden. Would you like to move the adoption of your report? Ah, yes, I would like to <laughs> move that my uh, report be accepted Great. as presented. I, thank you. Can I ask for a seconder? I second it, Dolly Williams. 
Thank you, Dolly. Any questions, comments, any discussions, discussion about the report before I call for the vote? I would just like to acknowledge all the great work that um, Aidan outlined there and the time that people put in. It's, um, I really, really, really appreciate that. <laughs> and I wasn't one of that had to do that. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy Tree. Any further discussion? Now time for the vote. All in favor of the report? Aye. I, I so we have uh, thumbs up, but I will ask uh, if there uh, is anyone not in favor and if you could uh, verbally um, uh, note that so we don't miss your vote. Fantastic, Aiden, the report has been adopted. Great, thank you. Um, I believe, Jenny, you can turn the chair back over to, my, to me. You have the reins. Okay, thank you. Um, next up is our, our budget. We'll have our uh, treasurer of our interim board, uh, Leslie Harris, uh, present the budget. Hi, all. Um, so I'm just going to run through what we have there for the budget and the way I'm going to do it, I'm just going to do the 2023 24 year and then as well just skip over and explain the difference between the 24 25. Um, so we'll run through the revenue first. Um, so for 2023 24, we're going to have 305,000 um, in our funding that we're receiving from the provincial government in the center. Uh, it'll go down a little bit in the 2024-25 year, down to 255,000. Um, for 2023-24, um, no, no additional grants on top of that. However, we do anticipate an 25,000 uh, for the 2024-25 year. Um, we have uh, a line item for mission-related earned income. Nothing in the 2023-24 year, but once we're up and running and we've got things going, we anticipate uh, an income of $75,000 for the 24-25 year. And memberships, um, I, I don't think there was a, a real calculation that went in here. We, we kind of popped a number in there. It could be way lower. Um, I don't think sorry, it could be way higher. I don't know if it'll be much lower, but we put 2000 uh, in for the current year and then 2024-25, um, we just uh, increased it there by about 25%. So our total revenue for the current year is going to be 307,000. And then for the next, we're looking at about 357.5. So we'll go down to our expenses now. These are the expenses we're gonna be spending on our staff. So our ED role is going to come in at 90,000 for the current year. Um, we've allocated a small increase for the next year, bringing it up to about uh, 93,600. Um, our program staff, which is gonna be the support to the ED is coming in at about 50,000. Small increase for the next year as well, up to about 52. Um, all of the costs that are based around that. So the employee benefits, um, we've got 25,200. And then again, the year after, we're just increase it a little bit up to 26,208. Um, nothing in the first year for contract staff, um, but whatever we earn up in, up in our revenue, we're gonna, we're gonna spend on contract staff in the 2024, 25 year. Um, so we have totals there for current year budget of expenses for personnel at 165,200. And then in the uh, following year, 2024, 25, it'll come in at about $246,808 to be precise. I'll just jump through the operating costs. Um, the budgets tried to capture everything there. Um, so we've got uh, home office costs at about 2,400 for the current year, and we're gonna, we're gonna replicate that in the next. Um, the board travel, meals, accommodations, 5,000 for each year. Um, staff travel, we have $10,000 for the current year and next. 
uh, member engagement, regional housing networks, childcare, honorariums, things to that effect. We've budgeted twenty thousand dollars for for each uh, for each year. Um, twenty thousand again for the AGM costs and travel to different meetings and conferences and such. Um, telephone and teleconferencing, so the costs that are associated, uh, twenty eight hundred for the current year, and then three thousand, a little bit of a buffer for the next. Um, we have laptops and software that keep us going. So we have about 5,000. The majority of that will be spent the first year. And then a little bit um, for the 2024-25 budget, just in case there's any increases in any of that for about $820. Uh, marketing communication. So this is a big one. So our branding efforts. So the majority of that's going to be spent to get us off the ground. We're looking at about $20,000 to engage um, an outside contractor to come in and do that for us. And then in the 2024-25 year, we'll just have a little bit of a buffer there in case there's any, any different uh, costs that come up from that. And then our different platforms that are going to cost um, our communications, monthly, monthly fees for that and would be $12,000. Um, for each year. Office supplies, pretty general, 1,000 for the first year, 12 for the next. Um, bank charges to keep us going. Um, the costs that are associated with that, about 750 for the first year, maybe eight for the second. Uh, board insurance, it's gonna be about 1,500 for each year. Uh, the different costs that are associated with the organization, so legal, professional costs, uh, staff recruitment, those types of costs, we're looking at about 8000 8, for the 2023-24 budget, 89.72 um, for the other for the 2024-25 budget. Um, IT support and accessibility training. We've uh, budgeted 20, 23, 24, we budgeted 10,000 for that and 5,000 in the following year. Um, our bookkeeping and our audit costs um, are gonna be 10,000 for each. Uh, programming and member costs, uh, we're looking at about 5,000. Bringing our total operating costs uh, for the current year of 141,800. And then you bring that up to uh, the total personnel expenses. We are exactly where we wanna be with what we have budgeted for revenue. And our total operating costs for the 2024-25 year are about 110,692. And then you wanna add that to the expenses of our personnel, which is exactly where we wanna be under our revenue costs. So does anybody have any particular questions about the budget as it's presented? Colleen does. Is that your hand up, Colleen? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was just trying to unmute. Uh, just okay. a, a quick question. Very nice. Uh, I really like that, what you did. Uh, Mission-related earned income. Could you just sort of explain that? Uh, what are those... Um, I knew that question was going to come up and I, I am not 100% sure. I, I have a thought process as to what it is. Aiden, do you or no? Is it? I think uh, uh, we can defer to Pauline for this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Pauline's yeah. the magic. Yes. Well, uh, th th yeah. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much, Leslie. And thanks for the question, Colleen. Uh, when we did the sustainability planning as part of the build together process, when, when, the, when the build together process uh, uncovered the need to form a Nova Scotia nonprofit housing association, one of the, one of the areas of work was to look at the sustainability of such an organization going forward. And uh, the, the, the team that we brought in to work with us in this area suggested that one avenue for achieving sustainability would be to try to secure mission related uh, income uh, as part of part of the work of the association. So mission related being any kind of programming that would strengthen the nonprofit housing sector in the province. So for example, if there is a you know, a program that uh, government wants to offer, for example, and needs a service provider that is directly going to benefit uh, the members of this association, that might be something that we would uh, submit a proposal to, to become the service provider for that 
particular program. Um, it may not be through government. There may be other forms of, of funding out there uh, through foundations or, or uh, other sources whereby we could um, generate revenue income for the association by providing uh, a program for our members that would be directly in keeping with the mission of the organization. So I, is that clear, Colleen? Is that okay? Thank you very much, Pauline, for, for answering that question that I did not know the exact answer to. It's okay. Great, great answer. Thank you, Pauline. All right, I believe uh, we have a question from Liz uh, Sunbo, if you can unmute. Thank you. Good morning. Um, a, a great um, program set up, I, I must say, and well needed across this province. Uh, I just had a couple of not so much questions, but uh, uh, comments around some of your costing. Um, the insurance content and liability seem to be a bit low. Um, the, uh, and with the audit and bookkeeping for the amount you've shown, I was wondering if perhaps you received a quote from an auditor as to what they might charge you, because generally even here up in Cumberland, uh, to get an audit for between three to $7,000, the amount you have paid, it wouldn't leave much for your bookkeeper. And I was just wondering if you had a quote on that. And my other comment was around the, the legal cost of $600. Um, I don't know if you have someone that may possibly, uh, you know, offer in-kind service, but uh, uh, such things as looking at your policies and, and ensuring that the, the legal uh, part of some of the, the information you'll have uh, or gather will be, uh, you know, correct. So those are my comments and um, I'm happy to be here today as part of your group. Thank you, Liz. I, I'm sure we all appreciate uh, uh, all the insights, especially for those who have gone through the process and know what costs are uh, more solidly. So thank you. Uh, Pauline, if you wanted to um, add some more comments about what Liz said. Sure, and thanks so much, Liz, for your uh, your keen eye on the budget. That's really great to see to see that and to hear those questions. Uh, in terms of insurance, and, and I'm not an expert on, on, on these things either, but I can tell you the process for forming the budget, we did, um, this is probably, you know, the 10th version, and we sent it out to all of the folks who've been working uh, to form the association, all the collaborative teams, uh, which included about, about 33 people. Um, in addition, or sorry, including the interim board. And based on the experiences of their organizations, we tried to get these numbers as tight as possible. But I can offer a, a few additional comments. With regard to insurance, the intention is that the Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association will not own property, and we won't even have an office per se. It'll be a virtual organization in the sense that the staff will work from home offices, uh, at least uh, for the first couple of years. So that does take the insurance cost down considerably. We did not get a firm quote. Uh, we simply didn't have enough information uh, at the time of putting the budget together uh, to, to, to enable us to do that. But certainly that will be probably one of the very first tasks um, the executive director once hired will be asked to do on behalf of the organization. Uh, we too recognize the concern around the audit costs, and to be to be quite honest, this might be an area that we need to do some some uh, try to influence some policy uh, as it relates to funding. Um, the audit costs are are quite prohibitive uh, for nonprofit organizations, and uh, this might be an area in which we need to try to work with our funding partners uh, to see if there's a way that we can have the required accountability as it relates to finance um, without the burden of paying, you know, $10,000 a year for audit costs on a $300,000 budget in total. So that's something uh, we, we feel like we've got a little bit of cushion in there um, if, if we do have to, to pay those prices. Um, and it's also possible that the program staff person may have the skills uh, to do the bookkeeping. So we, that may not have to be an out-of-pocket cost. Uh, it remains to be seen, but we're definitely thinking creatively about that. 
And in terms of the legal services provided, um, one of the advantages of forming an association of organizations is that sometimes our organization, our members, uh, make some of their um, professional services available to us. And the reason the legal costs are, are considerably lower than what we had anticipated uh, to date is because one of our member organizations uh, was able to uh, provide access to their, their legal services, uh, which was a huge, huge gift and a wonderful, wonderful support uh, to the association as it, uh, as it is getting up and running. Uh, so, and there are, there are definitely service providers out there, professional service providers who are, who are, you know, supportive of the work that we're doing and, and, you know, we're able to, to provide a slightly better deal um, for, to help us get up and running as well. So we, we know that some of these costs, um, we've been, we've been lucky so far, and we also know that there may be some challenges, but we hopefully have enough have enough cushion built in that we're able to manage those and to really uh, think creatively, but also perhaps do some advocacy for some changes uh, that might take some of some of the burdens off nonprofit organizations as well. I hope that answers your question. It did. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Pauline. So. Um, uh, if there's no more discussion about the uh, budget, I know we're kind of a little bit out of order. Leslie, if you would like to um, put the motion forward uh, to accept the budget. Yeah, no, for sure. And I just wanted to say one additional thing. Um, there will likely be lots of grants and money and different funding streams that we could possibly tap into that might offset some of the other costs. And so I think whoever's in that ED role will have to be very conscious of those things to see if we can buffer a little bit of the areas that we may have under budgeted. So I think that's also important. Um, that'll be a big part of that person's role. Um, so sorry, and yes, to get back to business, we're going to uh, to motion to approve the budget. I'll okay, second. So. Oh, no, yep, go ahead. Thanks, Chair. Sure. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, I'll uh, I'll take Colleen's note. Any opposed? Okay, hearing none and seeing none, I'll uh, say uh, motion is approved and the budget is accepted as presented. Thank you, Leslie. Thanks, everyone. Okay, so um, our uh, ne next uh, speaker is uh, uh, Ray Sullivan. And um, uh, Pauline, if you would be so gracious as to uh, give an introduction for Ray. Absolutely. Thanks, Aiden. So we are really pleased to uh, invite Ray Sullivan to join us uh, today and to, to, to provide a short address at our AGM. Ray is the relatively new executive director of the Canadian Housing Renewal Association. And I'm sure everyone is familiar with CHRA. It is a national organization of nonprofit housing providers, municipal government representatives, and, and generally people who are interested in creating nonprofit housing solutions across the country. And in uh, Ray's role as executive director for CHRA, uh, Ray also plays a leadership role with the Canadian Alliance of Nonprofit Housing Associations. Uh, so as I mentioned, there's an opportunity for us to learn and grow and partner and collaborate with other provincial nonprofit housing associations across the country. And uh, so the Canadian Alliance of Nonprofit Housing Associations is the organization that will uh, be the, the conduit or the avenue to get us there. And, and Ray has very generously invited us to join that organization already. And we thought it'd be wonderful to have an opportunity uh, for everyone to hear from Ray today and to share a little bit about what those two organizations uh, do nationally, and also to talk about some uh, real opportunities for our newly formed Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association on that national scale. So Ray, thanks so much for being here. We're really pleased to have you with us today. 
Thank you very much, Pauline, and thank you, Aidan, for, for, for welcoming me here. What a, what a pleasure it is, and what a great thing it is to see so many people joining uh, at, this, at this inaugural meeting. You know, creating something new is always a, a, a big deal, and, and you deserve to pat yourselves uh, on the back for that. So, um, bonjour, hello, Quay, my, my name is Ray. Uh, I'm coming to you from the uh, territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg people here in downtown Ottawa. And, uh, and I have to say, my thoughts have been with you folks in Nova Scotia for the past several months. You know, Stefan mentioned the, the, the forest fires uh, followed by the floods. I know many of you have uh, perhaps yourselves, your family, your friends, your, your neighbors, your tenants or your clients who have been affected by these things. So I want to let you know that your, your, your friends and allies across the country are, are thinking of you. Um, myself, I'm, I grew up in Quebec and, and moved to Ontario when I was a young adult, but I have, I have two kids who have become Nova Scotians. They're both uh, students at Dalhousie University. They uh, have seemed to have fallen in love with the ocean, and I don't think I'm ever going to get them back. And uh, my, my son works uh, as a volunteer at the Brunswick Street Mission in, uh, in Halifax, and I have to say we are working with him uh, heavily this past month, trying to find him an apartment anywhere near what we have budgeted uh, in downtown Halifax. And, you know, like, like a lot of you, I've, I've, I've worked in this area for, for a couple of decades now, and, it, and it's blowing my mind. Like the rents in downtown Halifax are, are higher than the rents in, in downtown Ottawa. And, and you know this stuff, right? You know, you know the crisis that we're facing, that we're seeing asking rents going up by double digits year over year, you know, far faster than, 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 than people's incomes can, can ever keep pace. And of course, what we're seeing is the people most vulnerable to that overheated housing market, people who are economically vulnerable, people in racialized communities getting squeezed out the end and finding themselves e either homeless or, or precariously housed and, and month to month on the edge of homelessness. You know this stuff. And it's not it's not just big cities anymore, right? It's not just Toronto and, and Vancouver going through this. It's, it's small towns and, and other communities across the country. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we're visiting a small town near where, where my wife grew up, probably less than 30,000 people in the whole population. And we were talking to people there and they're, they're dealing with a tent encampment, you know, people who've, who've become unhoused and have, have nowhere else to go. And this is a crisis that has been building for years, and that's why it's so important. But we have we have to work together, right? I mean, Stefan talked about this. Pauline talked about this. We have to collaborate. We have to team up. We have to join up. So congratulations on the work you're doing, uh, doing exactly that. And as Pauline said, you're 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 not alone. There's there's a network of nonprofit housing associations uh, right across the country. And we're we're very very happy to to welcome you among us. There's associations in. In New Brunswick, there's there's a couple, in fact, in Quebec, in Ontario, in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. I said Manitoba twice. Maybe it's because they're really good. Uh, Alberta, British Columbia, Nunavut as well, and of course national associations like ours at uh, at CHRA. We get together as CANFA, the Canadian Alliance of Nonprofit Housing Associations, every couple of months. It's it's a fantastic opportunity. We 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 collaborate on some of the substantive stuff. Uh, a subgroup of us are working together on an economic study right now on, on the impact of housing affordability on, on the Canadian economy. Um, but we also collaborate on the operations. You know, at CHRA, we've got a working group looking at, at how we set our membership fees. Super useful to be able to compare notes with other associations uh, across the country. We've got a meeting coming up uh, in a couple of weeks, I think. And one of the things we're talking about is is maybe we can team up on some of our group buying programs. You know, uh, a number of us offer group health insurance plans to our members, you know, a discounted rate with a bigger pool of people. Well, maybe if the three or four of them that are all offering them from the same provider can team up, we can offer even greater discounts to our members. So there's practical things, there's outcome driven things. We're all housers across the country and we're all, we're all working together and it's a, a fantastic, great opportunity. Uh, and of course, I know a number of you are familiar with, with Canadian Housing and Renewal Association, uh, CHRA, where I have the pleasure of, of being executive director. Our, um, our, our mission is very much to, to, to provoke system-wide change toward the right to housing. Uh, we do this by, by a lot of advocacy at the federal level. Uh, in less than an hour, there's going to be an announcement probably of a new minister, the federal government responsible for housing. Probably a shakeup in ministerial departments as well. 
putting more emphasis on, on dealing with the, the housing crisis. And this is where we need to work together. We need to, to join up and collaborate to have a strong voice at the federal level. And CHRA aims to be, we do our best to be the voice of the nonprofit and community housing sector. Uh, we also within CHRA support uh, an ind independent indigenous caucus. Um, the indigenous caucus brings together indigenous housing providers from coast to coast to coast uh, in, in an autonomous self-directed fashion to advance their priorities and very much so in the past several years, the need for a dedicated uh, for Indigenous and by Indigenous urban, rural, and northern uh, housing strategy. And they've achieved incredible success over, over the past year, and we're proud to have supported them. Uh, we have a couple of major events that I hope, I hope you'll, you'll come to. Uh, every fall, we have a Housing on the Hill event, basically a, a one-day conference with meetings with members of parliament and, and senators uh, mixed in throughout the day. And our big event is our annual Congress. Uh, so we're coming out not too far from where you are. We're coming out to Fredericton in, in April. And uh, most Maritimers I know are not afraid of a good long drive. So I hope we'll see many of you there in the second week of April uh, this coming year. Because it is so important that we come together. And these are the ways that we come together to, uh, to strengthen our voice, to work together and, and to collaborate. And, and when we do bring our voices together, we get heard uh, and it works. Housing is a top issue. There is undeniably uh, a crisis afoot. Um, so we hope that you'll, you'll join your voices to ours and we'll join our voice to yours. So congratulations on what you're accomplishing. I look forward to working with you over the coming years. Thank you so much, Ray. Um, I, I'm excited for the organization, for the board and for our coming staff to get acquainted with everything uh, CHRA uh, can offer, as well as uh, working collaboratively across the country. I know that there's opportunities because this is a, a federal crisis, um, that there's opportunities for our folks in uh, rural and urban uh, communities to come together and share resources. Um, thank you again, and uh, we're very appreciative of, of the support from our um, uh, across the country from all the different groups. So thank you for that. Um, so, uh, moving along in our uh, business items here, our uh, next item is uh, the Governance Committee. So, I'm uh, to uh, present the no uh, nominees for the Board of Directors. And so, I'd like to invite uh, uh, Bruce Holland uh, to present the slate of nominees. Hi, folks. I'm not sure if this has changed since yesterday, um, but I am uh, have a Pauline gave me a, a list, which I, I assume she shared with everyone else. And if you're OK, I'll present the list and then I'll call for further nominations and see if there's anyone that wants to be added. Is that OK, Pauline? Oh yes, yes, Bruce. That the list has been circulated with all of the with all of the executive, and uh, uh, that sounds great. Thank you. All right. So, um, if you have the everybody has the list, I'll just go through the names really quick. It's eight, eight, Aiden Cavisto, myself, Bruce Holland, Cher Devoe McDaniel, Janet Sim, Leslie Harris, Mary Desmond, Mel Sturk. <laughs> Uh, Michael Cabalan, Cabal uh, Nick Russell, and Nicole Rice. So I will call for further nominations. And if folks Any... uh, like to enter from the floor, you can put it into chat as well. Um, that way we can capture if they're interested. Um, yeah, I can't have... see the chat, so maybe just turn your microphone on and state your name and organization, and we'll add it to the list. Excuse me, Pauline, do you have the list on a slide? Someone's asking for the list in the chat. I'm just wondering if we can just put it on the slide. Yeah, I, I do have it, Nancy. For some reason, I'm having a little bit of a block sharing it, but I'm going to try again. Okay. And it's not allowing me to go to full screen. Oh, yeah, that's no, good. That's We've good. got it now. Can, yep. you, can you see it full screen? Yep. Okay, great. Thank great. you. Thank you. And I, I should say, I, 
I am on that list as well. Oh yeah, yes. I see that there's a few on there that, that you, the one you put up on the screen, uh, there's a couple been added since um, since I was sent the last document. Oh no, I see. Oh okay, I see. I see. Okay, never mind. Sorry. That's uh, okay, Bruce. We appreciate you trying to stay on top of it. So I will call for a second time. Are there any further nominations to the board? Of the Nova Scotia Nonprofit Housing Association. Okay, I see a couple in the chat there. John Andrew wants to nominate. Sorry, it disappeared on me. Aiden, can you see that or Pauline? Yep, it's uh, Debbie Tony and Sarah Fleming. Yes, and Sarah Sarah Fleming's from the United Way Colchester. Um. And then John Andrew, can you just say which group Debbie Tony is from? Put it down for the, in the notes. Yeah, plus Valley First Nation. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Okay. A third and final time. Any further nominations? So I will ask for a seconder for that list of nominations plus the two that were nominated from the floor. Can I have a seconder, please? Uh, Colleen Cameron will second that. Thank sorry, you, Colleen. I, sorry, Bruce, it's me from YWCA. I just want to check, like John Andrew nominated Debbie Tony, but is Debbie Tony a green? It should be on the list because she's not here. She, you can't put somebody in not a not on the call. Yeah, I, I, sorry. Just as a like, if someone is nominating on behalf of someone else, we we don't know if they would agree to to be on the board. Well, thank you for bringing that up. Actually, um, and I, I would just want to say right now that we have um, fifteen spots, uh, total available according to our bylaws, and so, um, if all of these spots are not filled. At this moment, we'll still be recruiting members, and we we do want to make sure that we're representing the different areas of Nova Scotia as well as the different groups. Um, and so, as uh, you know, in the next in the next little while, as we're either filling up the board, we want to make sure that we hold space for for groups and for different areas of the province. So it doesn't have to be uh, uh, filled uh, right now. John's yeah, indicated I, I, in the chat that she has agreed. But we can wait if you want to wait till she can be on a, a meeting and go to the, do it at the next board meeting. That would work as well. Mm -hmm. Aiden, I think we'll do that for. Uh, for Sorry, Chris, go ahead. Do you want to do you want to put her on or wait until the next board meeting? Let's wait until the next board meeting for now. Okay. Good. All right, so we have I moved the slate uh, with the two from the floor or the one from the floor, I guess, and the second one will add uh, at the next board meeting once we can confirm with that person. Um, once Aiden can confirm or someone from the from the board uh, will confirm that they're uh, willing to serve and then we'll add them at the next board meeting. Um, hearing no further nominations and. Uh, Given that there's no, um, that the board's slate is not full, I'll just acclaim the, those members elected. Is that, is that agreeable? Yes, agreed. Any opposed? Okay, hearing none, let's say it's passed. I just don't know if I can say that. <laughs> uh, sure you can. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Thank, Thank you, for your... My pleasure. Oh. I hear someone's voice. Great. So um, I, uh, 
want to say congratulations to everybody on the first uh, slate of official uh, uh, directors for our board. And um, again, I want to thank all of the uh, Cloudwork team members, the interim board members that have got us to this point. Um, it has been a, a lot of work and it wouldn't have come together without everyone's uh, input and uh, hard work, uh, especially I want to say a special thank you to uh, Pauline McIntosh and, and Nancy O'Regan. I know that they've uh, they've really worked hard throughout the whole build together process to get us here. So thank you very, very much for uh, getting us all organized and ready for today and all along the way. So thank you again. Uh, as well as we you know that we wouldn't be here without the support of the uh, Community Housing Transformation Center, as well as uh, the province of Nova Scotia. Um, a, a, the fact that we have uh, substantial um, funding to get this started and get going um, really shows that uh, changes changes in the air, and uh, it makes me very excited. So thank you yeah. to our our gracious funders. All right, so uh, I then I come back to um, the. Uh, membership drive. So we are hoping that people are, oh, thanks, thanks, John. Um, we're hoping that people would like to join our association and we we are raffling off tickets to go see uh, Michelle Obama down in Halifax at the Scotiabank Center. Um, and this is being put on uh, by the uh, Nova Scotia Cooperative Council. So uh, again, you can follow the link um, I think there was email sent out, but if people would like uh, the link, I think Nancy's put it in the chat. Uh, and so you can also uh, sign up to be a member there. And if you have any questions, further questions while you're signing up uh, for membership um, about where your organization might fall, then I know that uh, Nancy will be able to, to help navigate those. Uh, Aiden, can I just say a quick little note about the membership? Absolutely fees. So the applications are coming in and um, we've been waiting for this sort of this meeting to have a new membership committee that will sort of review and officially approve them all. Some of them are not applying in the categories that are the right one for them. And so we'll be contacting you individually. The next step will be you will get um, another email with a form to um, look at your payment options, how you'd like to pay your membership. And when you get that, it means, you know, your application has been reviewed, you're good to go. And then we're looking for the, the payment options to follow. So that will be the next step. So there's been, there's a bit of a delay while you've applied, we've had a look at them. We sort of know, you know, pretty much who we have, but we want to make sure that the, the membership committee has had a look and sort of done an official check mark against all the applications. We've looked up a couple to make sure that they are in fact in the right category. So you will get a you will get a confirmation and um, um, an indication of payment options to follow. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Um, so uh, with all of that uh, said and done, can I get a motion to adjourn? So move. All right, move, move by, by Dolly. Thank you, Dolly. All right, so yeah. that brings our meeting to a close. Um, I uh, would ask that anybody who's um, uh, agreed to be a part of the board to hang on for five minutes after everyone else has left and we'll we'll have a quick little board meeting. Okay, we'll so, do, yep. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to our, our speakers, Ray. And uh, Stefan, uh, very much appreciate your words of encouragement. And uh, yeah, we look forward to um, sending up more communications.